this morning, just in here, just calling out to God. Man. I, I, we, I guess we're going to have to do that every Sunday or something. Yeah. Yeah. They were just crying their heart out, just praying, seeking God, hollering this place, the presence of God be in this place. Wow. God just shows up and all of a sudden he just starts showing out and just start touching people and people feeling good and jumping around and running around. God just doing what he does how to do best. Amen. That's just be God. And when we start talking about he's a friend, can, can you, we're a friend of God? Come on. He's the one that made the universe and we're his friend? Come on now. That is profound. Amen. God bless you once again. God bless you. Uh, yeah, those that are streaming in, if you don't understand this, don't let ask me how I understand it either. All I know is when God is moving, I just move right with it. Amen. It's just God. Amen. Let's, let's uh, have an opportunity to give someone to testify this morning. Amen. I just want to sing this song to bless somebody. Come on. Go ahead. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Yes, sir. Yes. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than
have asked God to forgive me because I lied to my husband. As you all know that I had asked Susan to pray for me because um, I have, was bleeding from Monday to Wednesday and I had an ultrasound done on Wednesday and I reached out to Susan to pray for me because in the ER they said it could be my kidneys or I could be bleeding eternally or whatnot. But I reached out to Susan and I went to my ultrasound got the results on Thursday, and I thank God. Oh, it's right. nothing, you know, and, and the bleeding stopped on Wednesday. I be lying to my husband, I have this pick line, and I have to medicate myself with antibiotics for four days. Sorry, but... I haven't done it because I pray to God to heal me in the house. I don't want to depend on these medications for the rest of my life. I've been praying I gave it to God. I just want to thank all of you guys for praying for me and lifting me and my family up. God is good. I'm thankful that my husband is still here. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. 
And this is what we want people to experience. The love, the power, the omnipotence, the omnipresence of Almighty God. That's what it's all about. Amen. God bless you. We had something we were going to do. I guess we'll continue to do that. <laughs> we, we, we're going to go another route because God is doing something else. Is that all right? Is that all right to not do something else? Let's go ahead and play God. Is that all right?
Praise the Lord, Church. Hallelujah. I'm requesting right now um, Pastor's family to come here to the front as I see them standing here at the altar. Yay, Joshua, if you could come here. And I'm going to ask to all the women to stand and beg up for them. Come to the front, extend your hands, and let's pray for them.
Jesus come and come. And we stand in the gap for our pastor and his family. We stand, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Boy, you need to get your mind. I left them. You know why? Because they know. 
Yes. Everything that I instilled in him when he left in 2012, I was having a pity party for about a like week. I was sitting on my office chair at home and the Lord said, why are you having a pity party? He says, everything that you instilled in him and you taught him, he knows how to make his way back home. Amen. And I got up and I said, man, Lord, you're right. Amen. And I've been having a vacation ever since. <laughs> Believing that God was going, listen, I believed in God and I believed in what I instilled in him. About two months before he had asked. And I didn't say nothing because that's he belongs at home. That's his home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally came and said, Dad, can I move? You? I said, Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you. There was a point in time that I had the, two of the other kids had left the house. Most of y'all don't know this, but I know that y'all been praying for us because I hear it all. The time. And I thank you. I thank you for you know, and I thank God for my wife, a very hard-working woman. Amen. 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 Daddy, I mean, she works at night, and she gets home, sleeps about 4 in the morning, gets up at 8 and 9, and, and does it all over again, takes care of me, get, takes care of them. And it is my wife's desire in her heart to be here on Sunday. Yes. Yes. The enemy has been fighting us, but you know, I'm, I believe in God. Yes. I'm, I'm rejoicing because you know why? I'm seeing the word of God being manifested. You know, they all come from that one woman right there. I love that. Amen. And God has blessed these hands and her hands to be able to raise these children. Listen, we were on welfare. We were on Section 8. They ain't never tired of that stuff. Don't live on it. Get off of that stuff. That stuff is there to help us to move on to the next level. Right, Don't get that welfare mentality and that section eight mentality. Oh, yes. you know, I, I can't work, you know, I can't make too much money, you know, because I need to make, you know, keep that rent down. No, that, that, that's a poor spirit, a poverty spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God. God can bring this out. Yes, you know, and God blessed me and my wife to land two good jobs. Amen. 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 Able to provide and to take care and to bless. You know, and our home is like a, what, a red cross. Everybody come over to sleep and eat. Amen. And I love it because you know what? As, as the services was going on, I just began to think how God allows us to feed everybody and anybody that comes to our home houses that they sleep. And yet look at everything and say, man, God, you are good. Yeah. Because we still have enough to survive and to take care, amen, of the wife and the children. Yeah. You know, and I thank God for that. And please continue to pray. You know, to my seven children, y'all know I love you. I, I love you all very, very much. And, and, you know, and I do what I do because I know what, what it's like to be out there. The enemy, yes. he's nothing but, but a deceiver. Amen. I mean, yeah, you'll feel good. Your flesh will feel good. But at the long, you know, at the, at the end of the story, you know, the bottom line is you got to ask yourself, is it really worth it? Yeah. Is it really worth it? There's nothing out there, amen, that can rescue you and to save yourself. You know, so, man, I love you all. You know, some of you are, are at an age, amen, that now it's between you and God. You know, and you know this. You know, so I, I really love each and every one, all seven, seven of you. You know, God has blessed me, and I thank God, you know, for, for all of them that I never gave them up to my parents, you know, because it is our culture. You know, I fought for my four boys. I fought for 12 years, my mom and dad, that they wanted them. But I always remember what they did, you know, giving me up, me and my other brothers. As a matter of fact, me and all my siblings, we were all raised by our aunts and uncles. And I didn't want my children to go through that. And I just... I mean, as broken, as poor as we were, you know, I didn't have nothing living in the two bedrooms, seven of us at one time, sleeping on the floor, had nothing. The struggles, they were worth it. And they helped us. They helped us become who we are. And then not only that, it's good because when someone else is going through something, you don't look down at them. Because you know that that's where you came from. You never look down on anybody. Because we can always easily end up right. poor, we can live in shelter, we can be homeless, we can be under somebody else's roof. But 
thank God that He blessed us. Amen. 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 Because I, I know, you know, God's already given me some, but I'm like, God, 
whenever God moves in a certain way, I'm asking God already. You know, I didn't prepare anything. Yeah. Just what, what is it that you have? And I just grabbed my Bible and I opened up. And I mean, as soon as I prayed, and I just say, Lord, give me something to give to your people. My Bible fell right and it opened up to Isaiah chapter 55. And let's go there real quickly because you know it's so amazing. And I just want to share a couple of scriptures. I'm not, I'm not going to preach it. I'm just going to read it. Isaiah chapter 55 real quick and then we're going to move on. Because God already did what he did. Yeah. But as the service was going on and in the process of the service, one of the things that the Lord laid on my heart is the second coming. That we need to get right with the Lord. Because he is soon to come. And as I prayed and I asked God, I mean, that's what he had put in my heart, amen, to share with us this morning. But as the praises of God continued to go on, I was like, man, shoot, man, Lord, what do you want me to say? Because I know what I want to say. So I've already gotten it down, my scriptures and everything ready to go. And I asked the Lord, praise God, and he was de dealing with me and he put on my heart about his second coming. I opened the Bible and it fell right to Isaiah 55 and my eyes just went directly to verse number 1. And read all the way through to verse number 13. Listen to what he says. He says, Hope, everyone that thirsted, yeah, let me read it up, up there on the screen. He says, Everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money. And without price. Verse number two. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and ye that and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in its fatness. What is he talking about? He's making the comparison between why we spend money, we labor for the things of the earth. He's not saying that there's anything wrong with those things, but what he's saying and what he's trying to do is to help us to put into perspective the important things of life. Amen. You work so hard to take care of yourself, to put a roof over your head, amen, to eat, to drink, and all these things. He's saying labor also for your soul. And that's why he says in verse number two, he says, where do you spend your money? bread, that bread that does not bring satisfaction, right? Because you eat one time, what happens two or three hours later? You get hungry again. So what's he saying in essence is the spiritual uh, application to this, amen, is to invest in your spiritual life, amen, because you will not want to thirst or hunger anymore for the things of the world. Okay, and he says, and you labor for that which satisfies not. We work so hard. We work so hard, right? How many of us felt good last week because we had a three-day weekend? Came around Tuesday, what happened? We, the satisfaction stopped. As a matter of fact, the satisfaction stopped like that around 2 o'clock on Monday because your mind began to prepare for Tuesday. You see how that stuff works? But this is why it's so important that we put the emphasis, amen, on our spiritual life. And he says, amen, you labor for that which satisfies God. He says, hearken diligently unto me. This is God speaking to the children of Israel through the prophet Isaiah. He says, hearken diligently unto me and ye that which is good, and eat which that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. What fatness? In the fatness of the riches of the word of God, as we talked about that last week. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 16. Give me verse number 3. Incline your ear. Come in. He says, pay attention. Come in hear my word. If you're going to thirst and hunger, hunger after the word of God. Uh, uh, John chapter 7, verses number 37. He says, all ye that thirst, come unto me and drink. Jesus even talks about that in John chapter 15. He says that I am the bread of life. 
So God is putting everything into perspective for you and I, that he's our drink and he's our bread, that we will never hunger or thirst. And that's why David says in Psalm chapter 23 and verse number 1, that the Lord, he is my shepherd, and I shall not want. You're not going to want anything outside of God, because why? True spiritual satisfaction also brings true natural satisfaction. Oh, you. uh, you'll get that when you get home. <laughs> Incline your ear and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. God will make covenant. He will make a promise. He will make a contract. He will put an agreement together that he will not break with you and me. Right. That's how good God is. Verse number four. Behold, I've given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Verse number five. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and the nations that knew not thee shall run into thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified. He makes the transition talking to the children of Israel. Now he makes the transition and telling the children of Israel that if you don't get things together, I'm going to call a nation that are not my people. Who do you think he's talking about? Gentiles. You and me. Now he's opening it up and he's making it a universal call. Aren't you glad? What are you? Yeah. Karima? You Hispanic? Did that make you happy when we started singing in your language? Yes. It, it tickled me. Yes. It made you smile. I was God. Huh? This is a universal church. Where you been? <laughs> you came to the right place. He opens it up to the universe. To different types of people. Whether you're black, brown, yellow, or school girls, and you know, purple is body, God loves us all. I love that. Where's Rachel? We gotta find that we exalted in Tagalog. We gotta find that in Tongue. We gotta find it in Japanese. I don't well, we ain't got those people. I don't care. They're gonna start coming. I don't understand it. You understand we exalt you in English, right? Well, it's the same thing, whether you're speaking in Spanish, yeah, Tagalog. But we got Tagalog here, Tagalog back there, African. Come on, where my Africans at? Tomorrow? Praise God. God opens it up. He says, Thou shalt call a nation a people or an ethnicity that thou knowest not. A group of people, a different group of people outside of the race of Israel, the Jews. A nation that knew me not shall run into thee. He says, We are going to run into him. Boy, did not we run into him? Man, I mean, look at what God is doing. He had even the little kids praising God yeah. and running around. That was one of the things that brought me to church when I went to a church and saw all these kids running and crying and boohooing. Now, it's okay for our kids. Now, I know sometimes, you know, they might do it, you know, at, because they're kids and it's for fun. But in, in reality, let them run around sometimes. We know when to pull it back. We know when to stop them. Okay, now stop. You, you're just treating this as a playground. But if they're running around, let them play because all of a sudden that play will become a reality. And God began to move on there this morning. Man, God is no respecter of person. And he says, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Verse number six. He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And this is a message for us. God said, come, amen, and buy waters without money. Come and drink for free. He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seven. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, he will abundantly pardon. This is where I like it. Verse number 8. God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. We can't bring God down to our level. We got to go up to God's level. Everything that God thinks, praise God. The only way we're going to find out, it is written right in here in his word. Listen to what he says. This is how, this is the difference. God now puts a clarification, amen, between man and God. All right. Listen to verse number nine. He says here, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, God, man, right? He says, 
so are my ways higher than your ways. God has a standard, praise God. That transcends all, right, all, right. all thoughts Thank you. and all imagination. God has high standards. And so if God has high standards, guess what? He expects his people to have high standards. We were talking about today in our class, in our new conference class, that God rejected Cain's gift. Because the Bible just mentioned that it was from the ground. And he accepted Abel's gift, which was his first fruit from the stocks. Cain just gave God just any old thing. While Abel gave him his first, which is that is the law of the first mention, amen, with uh, 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 pertaining you know, He gave him his best. He gave him right off the top. Amen. And God expects our best because he has given to us his best. Praise God. Amen. Let's continue to go on here because I don't want to lose you. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. Verse number 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and return and not fear. You ever see the uh, snow go back up? You ever see the rain go back up? This is when, listen to what he's saying. Listen to the language. With the, there's a metaphor here that God is using. He says, as, as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, or it, it returns back to where it came, but he says, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. The rain, the snow, and all that stuff comes to water the earth, amen, to cultivate our land, or, or to bring some product, or some produce, so that you and I can have our meat, which is our sustainer, our sustainer to sustain us, our essentials, so that we can survive. And listen to what he says. Thank you, Lord. Verse number 11. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He said, it shall not return unto me void. In other words, that what God has spoken to us, it is here so that it can drop into our hearts, which is that ground, the fertile ground, right? The break of every foul place or every foul ground of our heart so the word of God can get in there so that we can do what? We can produce and bring forth meat and fruit so that others can be able to eat as well. It's amazing how God uses parables and metaphors to bring about uh, natural truth, but he uses a spirit, uh, natural truth to bring about a spiritual truth, amen, and revelation for you and I. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. In other words, that what God has said and spoken, his word will not come back to him empty. In other words, we can't use anything for an excuse because his word has already been spoken and it's come forth. He said, but it will, the word of God shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Verse number 11, 12. For you shall go out with joy. Listen. This is what happens when we're on the Lord's side. This is a promise that he has given to us. We shall go out with joy, be led forth with peace. The mountains, the hills shall break forth with, uh, before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Last verse, number 13, and we're going to cut you loose. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fern tree. Instead of the uh, briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. In other words, instead of stuff coming up to hurt us, God's going to give us certain things. The fern tree, right? And what else? What kind of tree? The myrtle tree. Amen. Things that are pleasant that we can build. Some of those trees that you can use, the scent. Right? Buildings and uh, wood and all that stuff. You know, so God, all he has for us are good things. Amen. But one of the things that's hold, if you get some time, please read this chapter throughout this week. Um, the first verse, he says, come on to me, you that thirst. And God will satisfy us. Thank Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This, this just a service. I don't even want to go home. God has just been so good to us, and I thank God for everyone being here. Amen. We thank God for those of you that have streamed in. Very, very unusual service, but we're used to it. Amen. And I thank God, and I pray that one day 
those of you that are streaming in can join in with us, amen, on what the Lord is doing here. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Just real quickly, we're going to have our announcement um, afterwards, but I want to say this to those that are streaming in. There will be no Bible study on Wednesday because we have two graduations that night, one of them being my daughter and the other one being Robert. Amen. And they both take place at 6 o'clock, and I know the church is going to be split. Some are going, you know, to Richmond, and some are going to be coming this way, you know, out here to Fairfield. So for those of you that stream in on a regular basis, to our Bible study, there are, there's no Bible study on this Wednesday, but we will pick back up on the 10th, on the 10th, June 10th, all right? All right, we want to acknowledge from Baleo, Rachel, yeah. Rochelle, God bless you. Thank you so much. And they are just amazing me. And also, my friend, Karima, <laughs> amen, all the way from Mexico. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From Richmond. Amen. God bless. That really did, man. Thank you to the praise team for putting that Spanish portion up. Okay, man. We want to uh, work on some other language. Uh, Y'all, too, bust out them Tagalog dictionary and just transform some of these songs, our Africans. I mean, we want it all. Amen. Praise God. Because we're a universal church. I mean, did you hear what she said? She said, well, that's the first time I never knew that church was here, but now you know. Here's one that you can count on. Right here, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God, praise God. We want to, amen, give out this certificate of baptism yeah. to our own sister Sadie Alatana. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, God. Praise God. God is so good. That was a smooth baptism last week. Amen. God just, uh, he is just so great. Amen. And God is just so worthy, praise God, uh, to be prayed. We're going to take and receive our offering very last, but we got one more thing that we want to do. We want to call up all of our graduates. We want to call up all of our graduates from high school. <clears throat> if you're coming, if you graduate from high school, from uh, eighth grade going into high school promotion, we want you to come. If you're going from junior high to middle school, please come. Please come. Let me get the two high schoolers right here. Get get oh get two two of the ones in the bags. Thank you. Came in real handy. <laughs> give, me, give me the high schoolers over here to my right. Josh? Right here, Jordan. Come right here next to Robert. There we go. What are you guys, y'all going to high school? High school. We have four. And we just want to acknowledge them. And the reason being is because some of us are not going to be able, uh, I'm not going to be able to make Roberts because. My daughter here is graduating from high school, and they're both graduating on Wednesday at 6. So we can pray. We pray God. And, uh, man, you know, education, we thank God that God is uh, moving them on to the next level that they have graduated. And also, amen. And he's high school. Oh, wow, we got three high schoolers and we got three uh, middle schoolers going to high school. And so we just thank God that these are being promoted to the next level. And listen, we need to pray for our children that are in high school. Let me just say something real quick. In her high school, what was the percentage? 42.5% are graduating. Are graduating. That means that's a 47.5% non-graduates or dropout. Only 100 kids, students in her class that is graduating. That's a very, very small class. You know, so we want to pray for our children and pray for their protection. You know, that God will continue to bless them and that we continue to pray for them as they move on to the next level. All right, and we made a special one for Robert because Robert, we're not going to be there. So we want you to come, amen, and 
to the lady on the rocker. This two colors, to Rivia, the high school and Chao and their school colors, and Fa'u, Fa'u to them. Put it on them. There you go. And we just want to say congratulations. We love you all. Come on, you guys.
this. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's lift to the Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the service today. We thank you a lot for your visitation. We ask, oh God, that you bless each and every one that's here as we depart from this place, but not from your presence. Go with us, Lord. Bless us, oh God, this morning and this week, oh God, as we graduates go forth and they graduate. Lord, we ask that you would bless the families. We rejoice in you, in Jesus' name. Uh, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, let it be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. This way I can pray in Jesus' name. Did everybody say?